Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of high blood pressure and uh, this video is largely about an interesting technique which can actually help lower the blood pressure without the need for lots of medications or in those people in whom either lots of medications are not working or causing troublesome side effects. Uh, I'm going to discuss an interesting technique that may help lower the blood pressure in those patients. So here goes. The first thing to say is blood pressure is a huge health problem. 30% of patients worldwide will have high blood pressure. And the problem with high blood pressure is if the blood pressure is actually high for that individual, it does them damage. And in the long run, it substantially increases the risk of heart attacks, strokes, kidney damage, eye damage, etc. So in those people where blood pressure is high and is causing that patient damage, it is a good idea to lower the blood pressure aggressively. Current strategies to lower the blood pressure include lifestyle management, uh, but also medication. And there are lots of different types of medications available and lots of patients are given combinations of different types of medications because it's infrequent to find just one medication doing uh, what it's meant to do in terms of lowering the blood pressure. Despite this, what we find is that 50% of patients don't get their blood pressure low enough with medication and about 30%, 20 to 30% of patients develop a condition called resistant hypertension where despite multiple medications, the blood pressure doesn't come down. The problem is obvious that the medications are causing side effects or may cause side effects, they're a pain to take, and the blood pressure is still not, and they're still not achieving what, what we're trying to achieve, i.e. bringing the patient's blood pressure down and thereby reducing the risk. Scientists are always on the lookout to try and identify whether there are any other ways of lowering the blood pressure without the need for taking lots of medications. And this is where this new technique comes in. Well, it's not a new technique, but this is an interesting technique, which is termed renal denervation. Renal denervation is a technique which may allow lowering of blood pressure when medications are not doing the job. So the first thing we know is that the kidneys are integral in the maintenance of blood pressure within the human body. Okay, So the kidneys are very sensitive, they will detect changes in our body, they will, change, they will release um, hormones which increase our blood pressure. And what we know is that the vascular supply, the blood supply to the kidneys is really important and that tends to have an impact on how the kidneys regulate blood pressure. When we look closer, we find that it is the nerves, the sympathetic nerves that supply these blood vessels to the kidneys that play a major role. And it is those nerves that tell the kidney vessels, you know, you need to squeeze. If the kidney vessels then squeeze, not as much blood goes to the kidneys. The kidneys then think, oh, we are dehydrated. They release hormones. They absorb fluid into the system to try and increase the blood pressure. So it is these sympathetic nerves in the vessels that are take, going to the kidneys that are responsible in a large way to how we maintain our blood pressure. What is really interesting is that researchers have managed to work out that if this is, let me just show you this, okay, so if this is your vessel, your, the, the blood vessel that takes blood to the kidneys, these sympathetic nerves the nerve endings are only about 2 to 2.5 millimeters away from the inside of the vessel. So it is possible to in some way intervene on these nerve endings through the vessel because they're so close to the, the inner surface of the blood vessel. Uh, and so the idea came about that if in some way one could deliver heat energy and in some way modulate these nerve endings, we could have an impact on the blood pressure. And this technique is called renal denervation. So in this technique, what they initially started doing is they started putting a catheter in through keyhole into the blood vessel surrounding the kidneys, going in and then delivering heat energy. And in some way that then damages the nerve endings and therefore the nerve endings don't respond to changes and therefore the kidneys don't respond to changes and therefore the blood pressure doesn't go up as much. They then said, okay, well, here is the principle that this is possible. Let's see whether it truly works. And therefore, they then decided to plan a study called the Simplicity Hypertension, Simplicity HTN1 trial. Okay, And this is, this is a small study. They took 45 patients. They did this procedure on them called renal denervation. 
and they found that what happens to the blood pressure, that's what they were looking for. They found that their average blood pressure before the denervation was 171 over 101. After they had the denervation, the blood pressure fell by about 27 millimeters of mercury, the top value, and 17 millimeters of mercury at the bottom value, 27 over 17, at one year since the procedure was performed. So they got really excited. They said, wow, this, you know, in this small study, it appears that this technique brings blood pressure down very aggressively by 27 millimeters of mercury. Most medications will not do that. So the next question was, okay, well, we need to do it in a bigger population of patients to see whether it still works, because 45 is still a tiny number. So in this study, they took 106 patients. This was called the Simplicity HTN2 study. In this study, they took 106 patients. Again, they were offered renal denervation or nothing. And again, 84% of those patients who underwent renal denervation responded with their blood pressures falling by, again, an average of 28 millimeters of mercury. So substantial reduction in blood pressure. Again, the numbers were small, so the results were encouraging, but again, the numbers, 106 patients, small numbers. And the other thing was that these people's blood pressure was being measured by office readings. It wasn't done by a 24-hour blood pressure monitor, which is a much more reliable way of measuring blood pressure, you see. So they were using office readings and they were comparing what happened to the office readings before and after the denervation, rather than using the gold standard way of measuring blood pressure, which is a 24-hour average. Then they undertook another study, and it was called the Simplicity HTN3 study. And Simplicity HTN3 study was a multi-center study. Lots of different centers were doing this. They recruited 535 patients, and this time they did measure the 24-hour blood pressure average first, and then they delivered the renal denervation. But the interesting thing in this study, and very disappointingly, was the fact that this failed. On the, in this study, renal denervation failed to show a substantial improvement in blood pressure. So really encouraging results in the first and second study. Third study, no real benefit. And then people sort of said, well, this technique really doesn't work. Let's not use it. However, there were some flaws in this study and some scientists felt that this study didn't truly represent the benefits. So the question was, why did it work in the first two studies? Why didn't it work in this study? And people started thinking, well, maybe it was because this technique was being performed in different centers and there was a difference in experience between different people and maybe some people weren't doing it properly. Maybe that's why we didn't see a benefit. So everyone went back to the drawing board. They decided, okay, well, maybe there's a problem with the catheters you know instead of delivering you know are they doing the job they went and studied the kidney vessels in more detail and they actually discovered that actually although you have some nerve endings over here at the beginning of the blood vessel there were a lot more nerve endings further down the blood vessel and it was also possible to start doing this uh, denervation or this delivering of heat into side branches of the kidney vessel. So they developed better catheters and they started experimenting with delivering denervation, uh, the ablation here and here and in the side branches. And on the basis of this, they said, okay, well, let's try again. You know, who are the people? So it also became when they analyzed the results of the Simplicity 3 study, they found that it was people who had just high top values, isolated systolic blood pressure readings that seemed to respond uh, less to denervation. And therefore, those people who had both high numbers at the top and the bottom seemed to respond better. So the newer studies, then they said, okay, we'll, we'll do more ablating, we'll, um, we'll do it in centers which have proper training, and we are going to do it in those people who have high values for both systolic and diastolic readings. And so subsequently there's been another study, smaller studies, one of them was called the spiral hypertension off med and on med studies. And again, they found that actually when you deliver renal denervation this way, it does reduce the blood pressure on a 24 hour monitor, but not as great as had pre previously been seen in the first two studies. 
Since then, there's been another study called the Radiant Solo um, study, Radiance HTN Solo study, again suggests that renal diversion does indeed lower the blood pressure, not as much as was previously thought, but it does lower the 24-hour blood pressure. So this technique is still in its infancy. It certainly seems on the basis of studies that in a select, carefully selected group of patients, it could make a substantial uh, improvement in blood pressure readings by delivering. The most interesting thing is it seems to be safe. It doesn't seem to be implicated with major problems to the kidneys. You would think that actually if you're delivering little burns around the kidney arteries that could cause the kidneys to arteries to stenose, but that hasn't really translated in actual, you know, the data from the studies we have. But that doesn't seem to happen. So relatively safe technique seems to be improving all the time, seems to significantly lower blood pressure, but we are still waiting for a really big study to confirm that. But, you know, if you are someone who has very high blood pressure, the blood pressure is harming you, you're trying the medications, you can't tolerate the medications or medications aren't working, then very worthwhile going and seeing a specialist with an, you know, a hypertension specialist and talking to him about renal denervation because that may just do the job. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, if um, you have any comments, please leave them below on my channel. And once again, thank you so much for all that you do for me.